Welcome to my continuing discussion on deferred taxes. In this podcast, I want to examine the effects of tax rate changes. In this podcast, I want to examine with you how a change in tax rate that has been enacted affects our calculations. I want to stress the word enacted. We only use this kind of an analysis if a tax rate change has been enacted and we know for sure the rate's going to change in the future years. We'd always start with a reconciliation and I want to reconcile 2013 and use the following example with you. Let's assume our pre-tax accounting income for 2013 was 150. That we have one timing difference and that relates to depreciation. On our income statement we use straight line but on our tax return we use makers. And in 2013 our tax return depreciation is going to be more by 10 than our accounting income depreciation was which is going to mean our taxable income is going to be less because it will have more depreciation taken. So our accounting income will be 150, but due to that increase in depreciation, our taxable income will be 140. And then let's assume that, that 10 reverses in 2014. Six of that 10 will reverse, and in 2015, the remaining four will. So that at the end of the period, it will have all reversed out. As of 2013, then, the future taxable amounts are going to be 10. I'm going to do a little bit different of a worksheet here. Let's assume further that our tax rate for 2013 is 40%, but for 2014, that additional 6,000 taken on the income statement and 4,000 for 2015 will be subject to a 45% tax rate. Does it make any sense to set up that future deductible amount at 40% if we know the rate's going to vary from there? So let's figure out what we think it will be for the future taxable reversals at the correct rate. The taxes payable amount will be 40% of 140. That equals 56. 45% of 6 will be 2.7. 45% of 4 will be 1.8. And these two total 4.5. So, although the rates vary on the 10, some of what it varies is 2.7 and 1.8 for a total of 4.5 will pick up. Everything's reversing at the 45%. So then, how does that entry look? Well, tax expense will be the sum of the deferred tax liability and taxes payable. Taxes payable will be 56. The Deferred tax liability we set up will be 4.5, 56, and 4.5 will give us a tax expense of 60.5. This is one of those cases where you can't take pre-tax accounting income and times it by the tax rate and have it tie out because some of that is at 40% and some of that is at 45. How will this play out? in our deferred tax liability account. I'm not going to make you suffer through all the entries because I know you know how the reconciliation goes. When you initially set up the amount, you will have put 4.5 in as a deferred tax liability. For 2014, 2.7 of that will reverse out. And for 2015, 
1.8% of that will reverse out. And your deferred tax liability will be at zero. This is going to work because we set it up at the rate that it would reverse at. So we have a rule that you can depend on. And that is set up any deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability at the rate it will reverse at. In accounting, this means it needs to be enacted because we knew that our depreciation would reverse out at 45%. That's the amount we used. I separated the columns. I guess I didn't really need to because it was going to be at a 45% rate. But sometimes it will reverse at 45% in one year, 46 or 47 or 48 in other years. And so you would need to separate it out like I've shown you. The example I've given you will work regardless of how many different varying rates that you have. Hey, thanks for joining me while we examine the effect of tax rate changes. Talk to you soon.